Today we talk about bubbles. I don't actually know if it's controversial, honestly, but I think it's an important conversation to be had because I noticed a lot of people are afraid of the word. You have, of course, like hype beasts within every single asset class and they never want to call anything a bubble because that would instill fear and well, if you're pumping something, you can't have fear, right? So first, what is a bubble? The general idea is that things are inflated because there's a lot of confidence in a market. And so that creates this feedback loop where people keep on investing money, whether it's in real estate or tech or crypto or cards, whatever. And that keeps inflating the prices. And so more people see that they notice, wow, those prices are going up. They put even more money in it. And it just creates a level of growth that maybe wasn't justified. After that, you usually have a bust or a bubble pop or whatever you want to say. Things throttle back down and some people lost money because they then sold right after the pop, while others, quite frankly, don't care because depending on what you bought, it may just reinflate all over again. Now, the thing is, whenever people think of a bubble, they think of these going to zero scenarios. They think, I saw this thing on the news and there's this crying woman running away from the bank and she knows she just went bankrupt because of the tech bubble and blah, blah, blah. And so a lot of people think bubble, that means going to zero. And that isn't really true. Obviously, this is a very touchy subject and it's very complex. So one single video will never like educate you on the matter. Again, there's been thousands of papers written about it, but I do hope I at least uh, bring some perspective. It's also important to note that you can't necessarily equate a bubble in one market to another. So for example, right now, let's look at the crypto bubble, right? 2017, everyone would agree that crypto was in a bubble and the bubble popped. Everything went back down way lower. However, look at the market now. Even if you bought in at the bubble in crypto 2017, right now you still doubled your money. Now you could argue, well, it's in a bubble again. And maybe that's the case. Who knows? But so it's very dangerous to have this black and white, like bubble, therefore zero, not bubble, therefore good. A lot of big markets are continuously going through boom and bust cycles. Like the whole idea of Keynesian economics and so forth, it's all just booms and busts. You could argue right now tech is in a bubble. You could argue right now real estate is in a bubble. You could argue right now blockchain as a whole is in a bubble. Collectibles are in a bubble. But like, if you then ask yourself the question, what the fuck do you even put your money in if everything's in a bubble, right? Now you could argue maybe currently there's just runaway inflation because of the amount of quantitative easing or Fed printing money go burr or whatever you want to call it that has been going on. I think like what? I read, I think 18% of all the US dollars in circulation were created in 2020. That's like big stuff, you know? So it's very possible that a lot of the asset inflation in all of the markets are straight up just inflation because of how much new money was created. Now you can say, well, it's actually not money printing and that's true. But again, go look at what quantitative easing is and, and get yourself educated on that matter. But so it's very important. I believe right now collectibles could be in a sort of speculative bubble, but that does not mean that I don't believe in certain collectibles. I am still buying certain collectibles. Look at, let's say the tech bubble, right? 99, 2000. Everyone remembers that as, well, wow, everything went to zero, but that isn't true. A lot of things went to shit because certain IPOs were for companies that never had any fundamental basis whatsoever and all the markets did crash. However, plenty of companies came out of that with really no issues after everything was said and done. Amazon was in that tech bubble. Would I be mad if I bought Amazon stock in 01? Absolutely fucking not. Now again, you can't necessarily equate financial markets to collectibles. That is very important. It's kind of like giving my perspective on markets. It's not this black and white. Again, look at the housing bubble of 0708. Are you mad if you bought a house at that time? I think you're up a lot right now. Despite that market right after said bubble pop doing badly. Again, you can't necessarily equate that to collectibles. I think a really cool channel people should check out is Reserved Investments. He's very anti-hype, let's say. So if you are the type of person who is very hyped up, maybe you're not excited to hear some of his points, but I think it's important to give some perspective. Beyond that, there's also multiple segments in a market. Like, look at Pokemon. I'm gonna be real. I called Pokemon a bubble at that point. October, Pokemon was in a bubble. Every Pokemon hype beast that's saying, no, 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 actually, no, it was in a speculative bubble. It was clear as day. Almost every Pokemon card, 
I am saying almost, like 85% of them, went down 30 to 80% from their highs in October. If you put that kind of number in any asset class, crypto, tech, housing, whatever, and you look back on that, you say, okay, that industry was in a bubble. But that doesn't mean that there's no value there. And plenty of segments in that market are doing great regardless. But you gotta call a spade a spade. And now, of course, these people are very afraid of using that word because once again, that way you instill fear in the heart of the Timmies and you need those Timmies to keep on spending money. So you never wanna use the word because, oh no, oh no, if I use the B word once, if I call even one thing a B word, I will scare off like 10 people who could buy my shit. And that's true, but I don't think that's very honest or rational. So while I am saying that, at that point in time, Pokemon was in a speculative bubble. A lot of people entered with no interest in the hobby, pumped up the prices to ridiculous levels in a very short time, and then those self-corrected again in a very short time. You could say that's a bubble. That doesn't mean that I don't believe in that market anymore. And again, certain segments of that market are still doing great. If you own Charizard PSA 10 First Edition or that Lugia, you know, you are doing great. If you own, this is actually a fun one, the, the full art modern trainer cards, those have gone up way more by now than back then. So there are always segments moving up and down and there is still plenty of organic interests in that hobby. It's just that the speculators, the short term quick bucks, those people got fucked. And you can say things are in bubbles without that meaning the market as a whole is gonna be invalid or going to zero or anything like that. Once again, going back to that tech bubble, right? Like if you owned Amazon in 99, sure, you didn't like the years after that, but if you still own Amazon right now after that, cool, good job, right? Now, once again, you shouldn't always equate actual stock markets to speculative markets like collectibles. Once again, they have fundamental bases and so forth, but it's about a mindset thing. It's about not being so black and white. So tying that back into Yu-Gi-Oh, I definitely think that we can see retraces. And that is not like some anti-hype kind of thing to say. It's very possible we will see retraces on a variety of cards. But what I believe is that after that, after some of the hype dies down, whether it is the runaway inflation from all of the new money into the system, whether it is the lockdowns that make it so people can now spend money on other things rather than collectibles, whether it's all of these outside factors change and create short term downturns and they could and that could even trigger like panic, which could then have even harsher retraces. But that also means that some things might become undervalued at that point, even compared to where they should be. But once all the dust settles, it is my belief that a lot of cards will regardless still have a really solid future. And that is what this is about to me. I don't really care whether certain cards go up, down, sideways and so forth right now. I believe certain cards just have a way bigger future ahead of them. And maybe I'm wrong, right? The fuck do I know? But that's my belief. That's where I put my money. Not all of it, of course. Like, again, this is speculative stuff. That's why I always try to hammer down, like, don't let your whole financial future depend on cardboard. That is extremely, extremely dangerous. Now, again, that doesn't mean you should never sell, you know. There's cards I have sold, and there's cards I'm buying, and there's cards I will probably still sell. Because, you know, if you bought something and it went up 500%, and you're like, cool, I'll take my profits there, I'll reduce my risk, I'll reduce my exposure. That's all fine, right? But like I said, there's a list of cards that I will never, ever, ever sell, regardless of what the market does, purely because of a law for those cards. That's also like a pretty important thing, right? That's also why I think it's important to buy the cards you like, because even if things go bad, you're still happy to own them. In the end, that should be what collectibles is about, right? Whenever there's mania, surely you can profit, but if you never gave a damn about cards to begin with, I don't know. There's probably like other assets that you will probably be more excited to spend time on and learn about and therefore do better in. But that's just me. Hope you found this interesting. Like, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Ciao.